good to be back on the air. Are you having trouble climbing the ranks in a payron? Are you worried that you can't get an APRS allocation because of being stuck in iron? Well, what if I told you that you can reach as far as diamond just by using a free-to-play planet and apostles? For this video, I'll give you the full build as well as how to play the team. I'm Asian and let's dive right in. Okay, so before we get started, if you don't know yet what a payron is or want to watch a more general overview of a payron, before we get started, I have my video explaining why you should play a payron in the card above and in the description below. But without further ado, let's get started. Team compositions in a payron are made up of both a planet or avatar and apostles. So first, let's talk about the planet or avatar itself. So this build is using a quad earth planet, the strategy that we want for this build is burst and targetable damage, mobility, and crowd control to make sure that we can get a hold of an avatar and pin him down while our apostles go to work on him. The following skills is what we want in the skill tree. So why quad earth? That's because our main skill for this build is spike wheel eruption or earth spike which fires 3 deadly spike wheels in the target direction. This is useful for two things, one is to kill a high priority apostle like a priest for example, or to hit the enemy avatar hard. The rest of the skill tree, let's look at it right now. The other two active skills that we will be using is Tailwind Dash and Zip Zap Orbs, which if you notice are both air skills, which means for fire and water, we will be taking exclusively passive skills, right? So in our first circle, let's start with air. Put one point in Tailwind Dash, that's all we need for it because we just want to be able to use it. Uh, the rest of its uh, percentages and such, we don't need to stress about that too much. I also recommend taking all three of its upgrades because it gives you more mobility in general. So it resets your dash and so on and so forth. Then we put two points into flow for the extra movement speed. For fire, we put 5 points into raid and 3 points in imbuement. This just gives us more damage to higher health opponents, which is important since we're running an aggressive build like I said, right? Uh, for earth, we want 5 points into wild growth and 1 point into tough skin. You could change how you allocate this, it's not very important as long as you make sure that you only use 6 points, right? Don't allocate too much. Last is for water, we want 5 points into gathering magic for extra mana regeneration. Cloak and Dagger is useless here since we won't be using many, if any at all, debuffs. So for our second circle for air, put 1 point in Zip Zap Orbs and get all 3 upgrades because this is what enables Zip Zap Orbs to be a very good skill. It has the potential to stun pretty much the entire team if you use it right, which is very very big in fights. Uh, it's underrated if you can cancel skills and cards, right? Uh, for earth, we want 4 points in Determination and 1 point in Flourish. Uh, it just gives us some more survi survivability, sorry, I guess, in the form of shielding. Don't allocate more because we all need the points that we can get in Earth as we get to Earth Spike later. And lastly, for the second circle for water, we just want 5 points in Life Drain, which is super important. This gives us Spell Vamp or Life Steal and some more damage, which is perfect for our build. Like I said, it's an aggressive build. And third circle, last but not the least, we want to put 5 points at least in spike wheel eruption to get the highest ratio of damage for the skill. In my opinion, 6 or 7 points is not valuable for the build because it gives uh, damage only for a percentage of your avatar's missing health, which is kind of counterproductive for us since we want to be aggressive at the start, right? Which means we'll be starting with the full HP bar anyway, so uh, it's a bit useless at the start. Next, we want to take upgrade 1 and upgrade 3, which allows uh, a bit of shield, but most importantly, it allows us to fire an extra wave of spikes for upgrade 3. And last but not the least, of course, put just one more point into the passive skill. Parts of the god just to allocate the whole 39 points uh, of earth. And just like that, our avatar is ready to go. Another important thing that people overlook in a payron is the placement of skills in the skill slots. So, you can see here on the screen that I have is, I have spike wheel at the leftmost because this actually dictates what card your avatar is going to draw first when the matches start. So we want to be able to fire off our main damage skill as early as we want, right? Next is the Apostles that we will be using. So for this build that we will be using, uh, the core Apostles is usually two Warriors and two Hunters. Since the most important aspect here is you want Apostles that can be able to target damage to the enemy avatar either by jumping into position or targeting them on demand. For this purpose, we are reliant on two warriors with Welcome to the Slam or Leaping Bonk and preferably Ticklad as well. This allows us to order our warriors to jump on and target priority targets which of course is the Avatar or other Apostles. So next is our Hunters. For our Hunters, there is only two skills that is a must-have for both of them which is Headshot and Root Drop Slide. 
This allows us to move our hunters and control their position while also giving us a convenient way to control the map since root trap slide also leaves a massive trap that will root targets caught inside if they enter, while headshot gives our hunters a targetable global burst attack that we can use to reliably damage the enemy avatar. Some substitutes that can work is a guardian with move skills like leaping shield and got your back, and of course baby cage which is a strong skill overall for guardians to control the map, or a rogue with killer instinct which allows you to instantly proc the rogue's passive skill which makes them jump to the lowest HP enemy on the map. Now let's get into the gameplay. For placement, the most important things to do is to place your warriors at the front and have your avatar as close as possible as well because you want your warriors to be able to jump over the front line of the enemy as soon as the match starts if you want them to while your avatar is able to close the distance and get a point blank earth spike into a priority target like for example a priest or the enemy avatar if he decides to cast a long spell. The strategy is to use headshot whenever it's available and cast it on the enemy avatar as well as through trap slide to place traps and cover the map as much as possible possible. This gives you areas basically where the enemy can just wander into, otherwise he risks getting snared where you can get a free earth spike onto him or your warriors can basically jump on him with the skills and get guaranteed hits. As the match continues, I try to get my warriors to jump onto the enemy avatar if he doesn't have more important apostles to kill first like a priest for example. Once you have Ticklad activated on an enemy, your warrior will just keep following and attacking him until the target dies or you make the warrior cast another spell. This is very useful so basically you can have your warriors target an enemy avatar for example and run him down by stunning him with zip zap orbs and tailwind dash so your warriors can catch him. Now there are cases where you can get matched against opponents who have lineup centered on killing your apostles as fast as possible. Don't worry because you can still win late game since earth spike gets easier to land once the zone becomes smaller. At the same time, zip zap orbs is still extremely powerful because it's a guaranteed AoE stun. During late game, I tend not to use Tailwind Dash and instead prioritize using Zip Zap and Earth Spike because while knockups are useful, it's simply not what you want to be doing while you are getting whacked by the enemy avatar and apostles. It's much better to be doing damage yourself and healing using Earth Spike or making sure that the enemy at least can cast skills on you by using Zip Zap Orbs. Another scenario that happens usually is if the enemy uses a damage heavy but squishy lineup like two rogues or more for example. It's very easy to burst them down when they are grouped together with a point blank earth spike. Usually one earth spike and a few more damage skills is enough to instantly kill a rogue. If you have a chance to burst and kill all enemy apostles, that's also an option don't forget. You don't always have to be focused on just chasing down and running down the enemy avatar. So let's look at some real match replays from me playing against real players during my climb to diamond 1. For this first match, uh, we're up against a Seed of Fire, Boulder Throw, Water Build Bubble, or a FC1, FC1, EC1, WC1 build that is kind of heavy on cancelling spells with crowd control using bubbles and the Boulder Throw. Since he has a Priest Apostle, that's the first priority, which you can see is what I did first here since the beginning of the match. I'm launching Earth Spikes and other damage spells onto the Priest, while also having one of my warriors jump on it to kill it as fast as possible, right? At this point, once the priest dies, uh, it's very easy to kind of focus on running him down as fast as possible because all I have to be careful with at this point is to not get hit with these other three skills, which are, of course, very hard to land in the first place, which is uh, Seed of Fire, Water Bubble, as well as uh, the Boulder Throw, which you can kind of see I've been dodging them left and right uh, with my Apostles, even with some of my Avatars here. And kind of just like that, the match is already done. Uh, he doesn't really have anything to uh, use for his rogues because, well, uh, the passive doesn't just proc on my avatar because in the first place, my avatar is the healthiest unit here on the board while this is ongoing. So you can see that he's kind of trying to dance around and uh, put down as many uh, crowd control as possible on my apostles, you know, uh, trying to line up those boulder throws and those bubbles. But at this point, you know, it's just very hard to do anything anymore. So you can see that I'm just doing my thing, uh, the warriors are running him down, the hunters as well, and it's only just a matter of time at this point. Uh, I just need to buy time. Uh, stall as much as I can, I can even kind of get into his face at this point because, you know, uh, it's long distance skills. So, very good match, uh, he put up a good fight, but it's kind of a very difficult matchup for him as well. So that's all for this video. If you want more Apeiron content, feel free to subscribe to my channel for quality GameFi content as well as to join Daurex Discord server for more opportunities to learn and earn in crypto through gaming and others. All the links are in the description below. I'll see you all on the other side.